Ahorita. Hello everyone, I can definitely see a little progress by losing around a kilogram or so with the routine exercises on a regular basis and eating good food. And honestly, I haven't missed out on eating varieties of food as there is so much that we can work around in the kitchen with simple ingredients that are available in the kitchen. And Indian food, Indian cuisine already have healthy options that we can add onto our daily routine such as idlis that are steamed. So today I'm making millet idlis as um, an even better option serving with three different types of chutneys and sambar. So here I'm making tomato chutney with three large tomatoes. In a pan I add in a tablespoon of sesame oil, mustard seeds, three garlic cloves, an inch of ginger, one green chilli, one dried red chilli which is bad game in Sinkai, a teaspoon of chana dal, a teaspoon of cumin seeds, curry leaves, one fresh red chilli, three chopped tomatoes. Adding in hing, I wait for the tomatoes to soften and then add in 12 mint leaves, coriander leaves, salt to taste. I'm allowing it to cool down. Now to make the white chutney, which is coconut chutney, I add in a cup measurement of freshly grated coconut, just around a tablespoon of darya dal, which is putane kadle, one green chilli, salt to taste and water to grind. So here we have coconut chutney. Now I continue using the same mixi jar to make the green chutney with a tablespoon of darya dal, half a cup of grated coconut, one green chilli, an inch of ginger, handful of mint leaves, handful of coriander leaves, salt and water. So here we have a strong green mint and coriander chutney for which I finish off by adding in fresh lime. The tomato mixture has cooled down so now I'm going to grind it. Here we have three different types of chutneys with different colors as well. I have half a cup of tur dal washed and soaked in water. I drain the water and add in fresh water. I chop the drumsticks now which is nuke kai. Luckily we got bale dele again which is banana leaf and uh, we love eating uh, in banana leaf as many times as we can and now that Shriya is home, um, happy to eat idli chutney sambar as a family uh, on banana leaf. Very important to sprinkle in some water and clean the leaves before eating. As the leaves were curled up, I thought it would be better to keep them faced down in which way they will turn flat by the time we eat uh, and we set to eat breakfast. Uh, the pressure cooker has started to steam up. Uh, it's then I add in the drumsticks. Now uh, the reason here why I add in the drumsticks now because if I add them before it will be overdone and turn mushy which I don't want to. I set the pressure cooker now for two whistles time and when it comes to making sambar it's always Santosh my husband who makes very delicious um, all varieties of sambar at home by adding in just the right amount of sambar powders and masala just like a restaurant style sambar. So making sambar is always been his duty and also that time is so good that I can finish off the rest of the chores in the kitchen. A helping hand in the kitchen is something that we all look forward for, isn't it? So this is how he does his style, his version of sambar with half a bottle of water and chopped carrots that he sets to boil. In the meantime, I add in salt to the batter. Uh, now this batter consists of one and a half cup of millet which is little millet, one and a half cup of idli rice, half a cup of urad dal, 
three cups of puffed rice which is mamra that I have soaked all of them in water for eight hours time and then I grind it to a fine paste fermented it for 24 hours and here we have the batter ready I use the same batter to make idlis and dosas as well and I add the cooking soda only when it's time to make idlis it's important to add in cooking soda just a pinch and combine it well um, on the top layer and then mix it up completely after three minutes time Santosh now adds in one large tomato and parallelly in a pan he adds in a tablespoon of sesame oil uh, with one large onion which is cut in big large chunks one and a half teaspoon of Kashmiri red chili powder a teaspoon of MTR sambar powder tamarind juice 1 eighth teaspoon of turmeric powder and then he adds in the sauteed onions. Cooked dhuta and drumsticks which is no kai and salt. I set the idlis, uh, the idli place ready by smearing some oil on the base and then the idli batter. Setting the idli stand in the Hawkins pressure cooker with a layer of water at the bottom for 10 minutes time. He makes another tarka with a teaspoon of oil, a teaspoon of ghee, mustard seeds, urad dal, cumin seeds, fenugreek seeds which is mente kalu, one dried red chilli, hing, curry leaves. <laughs> Idlis taste excellent with chutney puri and varieties of chutney. There is a whole lot of good feeling eating on a banana leaf given any variety of food and we love eating idlis. We go for an easy lunch with a salad in the afternoon. Um, this is actually Shreya's recipe that makes uh, that she often makes at uni. And I loved seeing her pictures every time whenever she made it. Uh, so I thought I should take this recipe from her and it turned out to be excellent. Uh, so I thought of sharing it now here. Um, here's how she does it with a can of mixed beans that I wash and then add in fresh cucumber cubes, feta cheese, this salad recipe is so quick, so easy that anyone can make and the best part is that it is filled with fresh vegetables, greens and beans. Adding in a handful of feta cheese, few tomato cubes, mixed beans, fresh salad leaves. This is a combination of rocket and baby leaves. I also add in a few cubes of fresh oranges. One more element. <laughs> Now for the dressing, it's a tablespoon of olive oil, a tablespoon of honey, salt to taste, parsley, chili flakes, half a fresh lemon, adding in the dressing just before eating. A whole bowl full of freshness and goodness. We went out for a good walk covering 10,000 steps. Well, I'm trying my best to reach 10,000 every day. And now that we are back home, making a quick tea time snack with my waffle maker and roti pressing machine. I dry roast four handful of peanuts until they change color and start sizzling. We'll wait for them to cool down. Um, there were so many of you asking for details about this roti pressing machine. So I thought it's important for me to share some information about it. It is in the dimension of 10 inches by 10 inches and weighs two kilograms. It's super light in weight that one can easily carry in the handbag. Uh, I layer in butter paper, 
smearing very little oil on both sheets to make pulkas. It's quite easy to make tedious rolling recipes with roti pressing machine. Easy way to separate the skin from the peanuts is by using a sieve. Now to make the peanut chat, I add in tomatoes, cucumbers, salt, parsley, red chilli powder, very little of onion, juice of half a large orange. I sauteed the onions to make the waffles. Onions are rich in antioxidants, good for hair and skin. This recipe can be made using leftover chapatis as well. I'm using the green chutney uh, which I made for idlis, layering it up on the pulkas and then I sprinkle in chaat masala, amchur powder, chilli flakes, sauteed onions, red chilies. Covering it up with another pulka and then set it in the waffle maker. A healthy protein filled tea time snack that we all enjoyed eating. If you don't have a waffle maker at home, you can use your dosa and chapati pan to roast or a sandwich maker will work too. This was for me and when I did it for my kids, I added in lots of feta cheese as well and that was, uh, which was at home and it tasted really good is what they said. Now for dinner, I'm planning to make jawar flatbread, jawar roti, for which I'm definitely using my roti pressing machine. I have moong dal soaked in water for an hour's time. In a pan, I add in coconut oil, a teaspoon of cumin seeds, two garlic cloves, one big onion cut lengthwise, one large tomato washed and soaked moong dal, half a bunch of palak leaves and water, Parallelly, as it is getting boiled, I can easily make jorit roti all by myself without the help of anyone for which I use 1 cup of jawar flour, jorit it too and with the same cup measurement of water, setting it to boil and once the water starts bubbling, I add in the jawar flour and stirring in very well. Taking just the required amount needed to make one roti, kneading it with my fist and by adding very little of cold water only to the amount that will make the dough soft and you can actually feel it in the fist that the dough is ready. Placing the butter paper on both sides and flattening the dough by pressing. Um, now it's important to rotate the sheet from all four sides and pressing again from all four sides in which way it will be even and the dough will be as thin as you want it to be. It is quite easy to press uh, not needing a lot of pressure. The rolling of uh, jolid roti which would have taken ages to roll becomes so easy with the help of roti pressing machine. You need to place the sheet upside down on the tawa with the little heat that is passing by. It's easier to lift the sheet and then we dab the top layer with water with the help of the kitchen towel or you can use a cloth piece. And then once it's done on both sides, I place the rotis on the direct gas, the direct flame, just so that there's no raw flavor left. Now, if you want to have a roti pressing machine to yourself, this is the number that you need to contact and you can see it on the screen. The seller is based in India. Her name is Swapna and is known with the name Aishwarya Fashions. The cost of the roti maker is Rs. 1,200. Courier charges are actual charges and the butter paper cost is Rs 120 per sheet. They do not have cash on delivery facility. 
Payment should be made through GPay or phone pay and share the screenshot with her. I'm also leaving all the details in the description box for you to have a look at. So please make sure to look uh, in the description box as well. The roti pressing machine can be used in making tali pettu, akki roti, jolid roti, puris and parathas as well. Having this roti pressing machine makes the most tedious rolling job so easy, so fast that we can parallelly work with other things in the kitchen. For the moong dal and palak palya, as the moong dal is soft now, I add in a teaspoon of green chilli paste, 1 8 teaspoon of turmeric, salt to taste and half a teaspoon of garam masala. I really hope you found this video with all the information that was needed and also with the recipes from our very own Indian cuisine that are uh, diet friendly yes. and healthy. Enjoy your time with your family in all that you do and see you all in the next video. Thank you.